Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Don't Argue Podcast. I hope you guys are well. Thanks again for tuning in. Yes, it is the aftermath of the unfortunate um, game that was last night. But in saying that, now that uh, we've gone over that, we look forward to 2023. But in saying that, there's a lot of, uh, I suppose, turning wheels, so, uh, so to speak. So it's uh, it's up to me to, to give you guys my thoughts on all of that stuff. But before we get into it, hit that intro. <laughs> Right, with uh, that loss there against Collingwood, Fremantle now look into the near future, or the distant future, and we say goodbye to David Mundy, a great serviceman for the club, and uh, possibly saying goodbye to some other players. Now, uh, these players here I'm going to be naming may come as a surprise to you, or may not, but in saying that, there's a lot of controversy surrounding these particular players, and uh, I suppose in saying that, we've just got to take it head on. First and foremost, uh, the likes of Rory Lobb, Griffin Logue, Blake Akers, Lloyd Meek, and now Liam Henry are on the chopping blocks or the negotiating blocks, again, depending on where you are from, right? What side of the table? So uh, Rory Lobb has been linked, apparently, to the Western Bulldogs, Griffin Lowe to North Melbourne and or Sydney, Blake Akers to Carlton, Lloyd Meek to GWS, and uh, as for Liam Henry, just don't know. Now, if, if I was to be honest with you guys, I'll, I'll, I think I'll assess each player individually and give you guys my thoughts on him. Obviously, as well, you got the name of Luke Jackson there. And I'll give you guys a bit of a surprise name as well that's uh, apparently doing the circles or the rounds, so to speak. So, in saying that, we'll get into it. First and foremost, Rory Lobb. Um, obviously, he's been a controversial figure for Fremantle, particularly in the last couple of months. Or should I even say as well as last year? There was rumors during the rounds that he was unsatisfied with the club. He wants it out. And uh, because of that... Obviously, you could argue and say that as the time sort of ticked on, you probably saw a less enthusiastic Rory Lobb. Another game against Collingwood. Again, I'm not going to throw names and stuff like that, but could he have done more? Sure. Did he basically stamp his reason? Or did he, did he basically show us a game as to why we probably don't want him here, most likely? Now with Rory Lobb, um, th does he go? I, I think he does. Um, do we want to try and hold him back? No, not really. I, I think uh, Fremantle are definitely in a period where, not necessarily rebuild, but I think we're in a period where we've got to sort of turn the wheels, right? So if Rory Love goes, sweet as, it is what it is. I'm not sure about the contract side, side of things again, so you guys need to correct me, but if we if he goes to the Western Bulldogs, do we get a trade from that? Like, can we get a piece from him? I'm not sure. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy if he goes. Um, I don't see him staying, and personally, no, I, I think... Uh, I think it is what it is, right? We say goodbye to that chapter there. Griffin Logue, a very interesting one, obviously part of the uh, the what the the old and young the old and bull young bull podcast there with Dave Mundy. Now, as to what happens to that next year, I have no idea. Even this season, uh, the, the off season, so to speak, I'm not sure. So he has been linked apparently to um, what uh, North Melbourne and or Sydney. Uh, Griffin Logue, right? Uh, I've touched on it before. He was a player, in my opinion, where when I first started falling through, I had no idea who, who he was really. He was injured a lot of the time. Obviously, Freeman are doing well to um, rehabilitate him, look after him, take care of him, and obviously, you know, pay him his wage because it is what it is when he signed the dotted line. Now, as things have turned and contract sort of talk um, it has come around, it has been quite clear to me anyway that uh, it seems like, again, and this is all reported, that he's not satisfied with the uh, offer on the table that Fremantle have given him. Now, the, the, the initial offer was, I think, 200000 to 250 and then we upped it literally double by $500,000, and he's still sort of, again, looking around. Now, in my opinion, if you're going to be looking around like that, and you haven't really solidified yourself as a top 10 player in the AFL, or top 5, you know what I mean? Um, do you really love the club? Now, he says he's a, he's a club first person. If you're a club first person, you take an offer like that. And if you don't, then fair enough, right? You open the door, you say thank you for your service, and you give them the good old wave or good old don't argue. So as we sort of, again, look at this contract here, particularly with Logue, again, I ask the question, if he goes, do we get a trade piece for him back? Um, again, what, what does um, Peter Bell sort of do? And it's interesting because that North Melbourne thing, do we, do we give, uh, you know, Griffin Logue for, for that draft one pick? And then some assets, or I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But again, it's, it's all interesting as I smile thinking about that scenario. Another player as well that I didn't mention, but I will now, is Darcy Tucker. So apparently, again, doing the rounds that he's going to North Melbourne. 
Um, and just quickly again, just going back on Griffin Lurk, sorry. Um, obviously, we know he's transitional in positioning, right? Forward, back, this, that. But again, is he a sort of player, the way he's been playing, is he somebody that you really, really need? Yeah, you do to a degree, but you know what I mean? Like, like if you could get... I know it's really tough, you know, it depends on where, what camp you sort of lay in. But ultimately, would you do everything you can to keep him? No, I don't think so. He's not that type of player for me. Personally, it might be for you, but that's just the way I see it. Now, again, back on, on Darcy Tucker as well. Rumors doing the round that North Melbourne won him. Simple as that, you let him go, right? Hasn't had the best season per se. We have given him chance after chance. You know what I mean? Don't don't worry. This is not like a this is not a player who has been held down by us. He's had his time. He's He's been given fruit to eat, so to speak, on the field. And a lot of the time, you know, yes and no, you know, hasn't been the most consistent player. It is what it is. You'll probably go. Another player as well, Blake Akers. And um, I think this is a player here, much like Logue, where I think a lot of fans will probably want him to stay. But again, again, yeah, you know, if, if the paper isn't want, uh, matching up to what they want, what will they do? What does he do? So he's going to Carlton, apparently, apparently, um, reportedly. Um, again, trade pieces, right? What do we get back? I don't know. Uh, is there a player that you want? Sure. All right. I thought he was sensational in the latter part of the season, or should I say the season in general? He's been good, obviously, barring the injury there. But I mean, he has, he has been, he's been good. Like, uh, I like what he's been able to bring. Um, it's, it's unfortunate that injuries just have, injuries just have a way of some players, right? Where their closest friend is quite literally, the injury and, and and I think Acres the season anyway. But look, anyway, I digress. Um, if he goes, he goes. But do I want him? Yeah, I think I think he's he's a player worth trying to fight for. Now Lloyd Meek as well, uh, GWS. I would probably say that he needs to stay personally. I like what Meek brings. Um, you know, obviously being being the player that he is. Um, yeah, it, it, it's funny. It's 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 funny that one. But I think ultimately I'll I'll bring him i'll do anything i can to keep him he's still a young up-and-coming player as well what he gives Frio, we've seen it in, in, in little drips and drabs so to speak um especially the work that he does on when he does play i yeah how i've been saying that how i've been saying that obviously there are people who look at his consistency and look at the way he plays on a regular basis and you probably look well yeah if you let him go you let him go you probably don't miss out on much but again the same question asked for all these players where do you go or do we get anything back I'm not too sure. But yeah. Uh, now we go to Liam Henry. Now Liam Henry for mine is an interesting player nonetheless. Um, the words of potential is thrown there. The, the words of can be or, you know, we'll get there. But ultimately, uh, no, he hasn't. Uh, that's the Bjorn Lendl. His WFL record as well does not track well, to be fair with you guys. Um, I'll be honest with you guys. This was a bust. Now, is it a strong word to you? Sure, it is. But does the cap fit? Does the shoe fit? And I think it does. Uh, Liam Henry for mine has undoubtedly been one of the bigger disappointments. Yeah, look, no offense, but you know, Liam Henry has been unfortunately one of the, uh, yeah, it's been a bust, a bit of a bust. Look, I understand you can be patient, cultivate, wait to grow. But then when you got the likes of Frederick, Young, Sarong there, and the fact that he hasn't really been in that picture, you know, a lot of questions need to be asked. If we can get something good from Shaw, and I think that's where we might be looking, right? Again, I wouldn't be, yeah, I would, I wouldn't be uh, upset if we let him go. Uh, to be fair with you, um, I can't believe we, Roy, you know, we had Pickett there, we had Pickett there, and we, we anyway, I digress. Um, look, out of all those names there, I think Acres and Meek are the ones I'll be trying to fight for to get. Now, in saying that, obviously Fremantle. If this happens, who do we get? What happens? I'm not too sure, but that's the excitement. Now, 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 in saying that, in saying that, uh, the news drop as well. I actually want to give you guys is. Um, Peter Bell. Now, apparently, Peter Bell may be moving to North Melbourne, CEO, possibly. Now, that is what I'm hearing. Now, as to whether or not that actually happens, I'm not too sure, but, 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 that is a massive call. Now, as to what happens uh, to Fremantle, if he does go, I'm not too sure. I don't know about his contract stuff. I don't know about the, the this and all that, so I don't know. No idea. But um, that is an interesting move. Now, what are your thoughts if uh, he goes? And obviously on top of that as well, you got the, the likes of, uh, what, the assistant coach for Fremantle, uh, is it Josh Carr? He's saying that he wants to go to Port. Um, yeah, this season, is, this season is interesting in the sense that there's going to be a lot of moving pieces for Fremantle. Um, 
as uh, as uh, Longmuir said, basically, just to paraphrase him from last night, when the trade period comes, when all that stuff comes, they'll be ready to, to talk, basically, right? Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of things happening there. As for Fremantle, um, as for me and my thoughts as to, you know, all that stuff that happens, if we can get good pieces back, we get them back, right? We, we get them, yeah? I'm not too bothered by all that stuff there. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd throw it to you guys. Give me your thoughts. Um, again, the, of the 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 season review will be coming up this week sometime. Yeah, where I'll be giving you guys my thoughts on all things. Fremantle and the summation of our year. Um, and in saying that as well, um, Nat Fife, you know, how heartbreaking was it really uh, for him to, um, you know, just, just be sitting the majority of the season anyway. I know he bravely tried to fight it off and it was good to see but I mean ultimately things just weren't connecting um Nat Fife in my honest opinion is probably at the most vulnerable he's ever been as a player um because we're seeing Nat Fife more on the sidelines as opposed to the daily regular grind right on the footy field and it's it's a very vulnerable position to be in I would imagine especially for a player of his caliber his status in the AFL he'll go down as one of the greats uh, and you definitely put him in the top echelon, I think, anyway, but even more so if Fremantle can win a, uh, a flag, and obviously if he could get the uh, Norm Smith, Smith, but anyway, I, I stopped there. Give me your thoughts. A um, lot of crazy things happening, a lot of crazy things happening, and uh, I think uh, it's, it's yeah, it is what it is, right? Anyway, it is what it is. All right, we'll see what happens. Yeah, take it easy, guys. See you guys next time, and... Um, Whatever happens will happen, right, at this trade period, in this trade period. But I'm looking forward to the news. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. See you guys next time. And um, just remember, don't argue.